All right, thank you for joining us for a talk with Tony. Our guest is Arnold Randall, who's superintendent of the Forest Preserves. Welcome, Arnold. Thanks for having me. All right, so I know you well, but our viewers may not. So tell us how you came to be head of the Forest Preserves. Your life history. My life history. Uh, well, I'm a lifelong Chicagoan, native South Sider, born and raised in the Woodlawn community. Yay, Woodlawn. Um, All right. And uh, really uh, was fortunate to have parents who really were uh, passionate about the outdoors, particularly horseback riding, interestingly enough. And uh, so spent a lot of time on farms and outdoors. When I wasn't in the city, we were out in, we were out in the country. And so I spent a lot of time doing that. Um, flash forward, I, I, I had the opportunity to start working for the parks in Chicago in the mid 90s. And it was a really good time to start working for the parks. There's a lot of change going on, a lot of reform. And I got to be part of that. It was really exciting. And I, I got the, the bug and I, and I really enjoyed working for government. It was, I'd found my passion there. And, uh, after that, worked for, for the Department of Planning for the city, as you know, in the mayor's office, and then uh, got out of government and uh, worked on the Olympic bid for, for, the, for, the, uh, for the city and unsuccessfully, but it was a good experience for sure, and left government. Went to the University of Chicago and uh, thought I was glad to be out, but I really missed the energy of, of working in government and making change, to be honest with you. And then you asked me to, to help with the transition for the forest preserves when you were elected, the first elected. And I fell in love with the Forest Preserves right away. I realized what a great asset they were and uh, felt like there was a lot of opportunity for improvement. And uh, you thankfully asked me to come on board and I've been here ever since. So what's the basic difference between like municipal parks and the, our Forest Preserves? So uh, they both serve really important purposes. Um, municipal parks really, uh, for the most part, are really about recreation and opportunity. You know, and that could be cultural recreation, but it's, it's mostly sports and athletics and a chance for people to walk from their homes and, and get out and enjoy you know, uh, uh, sports and activities like that. The Forest Preserves has some of that, but it's more about nature and nature-based uh, recreation and really giving people the opportunity to enjoy nature. And that's trail walking, or that's getting in a canoe or kayak, or that's uh, watching birds, or, or even riding your bike. So all those things in nature, fishing, things that we, camping, things that we think about but are not as accessible and in, in, in necessarily in a city park. And so the missions are different, but they complement each other, I think. And I think the forest preserves are this wonderful outlet for people to get away from urban life and really just escape into nature, not very far away from, from the city at all. Yeah. So we're unusual in lots of respects. We have more land than most forest preserves and yes. we're older. What's the story? So we are the largest forest preserve system of its type in the country and we're one of the oldest. I think there's a similar system in Boston that's maybe a year old or something like that. But so we're right there. We're, we're, and we're, we're national and international leaders on what we do. What makes us unique is having this much open space so close to a major city. You know, obviously if you go out west and you see the national parks or Places like that, there's more land, but they're not near big cities. What we have here is unusual because you can access 70,000 acres of natural lands uh, within 20 minutes of your house, and that's really unique and special. Yeah, unusual for sure. Yes, for sure. All right, so you've been at the Forest Preserves now for a decade. A decade, yes. Yeah, so what, what are you proudest of? What's, what's going on that you want to share with us? Um, I am proud of our, our efforts to really make it more accessible for all kinds of people. I think you know, myself, and I've heard you say this too, didn't fully uh, recognize the value of all this nature so close to us. I didn't take advantage of it. I used to go swimming in Green Lake uh, when I was a kid, and that's the only place I went in the forest preserves. But uh, making it more accessible through programming for a lot of young people, a lot of city, a lot of city residents, and we want to continue to do that. I think has been exciting. You know, building the campgrounds has been really exciting. I think it's really a signature project for this administration to have camping, overnight camping, both. Let's with, talk more about the campgrounds because yeah. that's kind of a, as you say, uh, one of our legacy it is. projects. So the camp, you know, there was no camping for 50 years in the Forest Preserve. There was camping early on in its history, and, but it wasn't real well managed, and, and then the, they just decided to stop. And, and there was no camping except for the scout, some scouting groups. And uh, we turned over our, our campgrounds to the scouting groups, and they weren't able to maintain them, and they had fell into disrepair, and they frankly were an embarrassment, you know, when we got here. And, uh, we decided early on that we wanted to make camping uh, a priority, be recognizing that camping early on for a lot of families, it's a great opportunity, but you know, introduces people to nature in a pretty significant way. Uh, so we were able to take advantage of some, bond, of some bond money at the time, and we built or rebuilt five campgrounds around the system, and they have beautiful cabins. Uh, one has uh, bunkhouses, which will, will accommodate larger groups. 
a lot of outdoor tent camping, you know, one is on a lake, they all have a different uh, connection to nature, they all have trail systems, and they've been extremely successful. Uh, they, they, every year except for the COVID year, the numbers have gone up significantly, and we were, you know, over 80,000 visits last year, or in 2019, alone. And so we expect, you know, uh, and, and even during COVID, we opened them up on a limited basis and we still had a lot of usership. So we know when things get back to somewhat normal, we'll have those big numbers again. And you've got a lot of first time campers, people who've never camped before who come in. Uh, you have people who uh, travel across country and camp at different sites who come here. And we actually have this very interesting map that shows where we've had a visitor from every state in the union and another 12 or so foreign countries that have camped in the forest preserves. So that's pretty amazing. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah, when you think about it, it's pretty amazing. Yeah, so in addition to our campgrounds and the efforts there, what else do you want to share that you've probably? Uh, I think we've really taken the mission of conserving and uh, restoring the land very seriously. Uh, and so what that means is in the forest preserves, uh, the lands were very different 200 years ago, for example, pre-settlement by Europeans. and. Uh, there were native people here, obviously, for thousands of years. Um, but when we came in these large numbers, millions of people, we brought our plants uh, from our countries of origin, and we fundamentally changed the landscapes. And why that's problematic is the things that were growing here and surviving here were having a hard time surviving or growing here. And so we decided a long time ago that we needed to start restoring the land, you know, prior to this administration, but we really ramped it up in a significant way. So we really put our resources toward land restoration, meaning removing invasive plant species, burning the land with regularity in the spring and the fall, that would allow these native plants that existed in the soil to then start to grow again. And so what you see is our healthy ecosystems. You see animals and plants that you haven't seen in years. You see eagles nesting in the forest preserve. I'd say more than five different eagles nest. And that, none of that existed 10 years ago. And we're, you know, we're actively managing about 12,000 acres of land right now, and we're excited about that. We want to continue to grow that. That's part of our next century conservation plan and our goals there. So managing the land in a healthy way is one of the key pillars of what we're supposed to be doing, in addition to connecting with the larger public, a, a more diverse public, uh, and then just really you know, uh, sharing what we do with everybody. So let's talk about the next conservation plan. You mentioned that. Yes. What, how did that come about? So uh, we recognized early on in our tenure here that we had a centennial anniversary coming and uh, the Forest Preserve was going to turn 100 years old and we thought, well, we should celebrate that, right? But we should do more than that. We should use it as a catalyst for other things and we should do some planning to really think about what the next 100 years look like and have a, a roadmap for how we improve the organization and that we're healthy for the long term. Uh, so out of that came this idea of a, a master plan, a framework plan for the forest preserves. How do we move forward? What's our, our next century conservation plan? And it turned out better than we could have thought, frankly. It was, um, uh, we, you appointed uh, and the board approved a, a group of civic leaders to take the lead in, in this planning effort. We hired a really strong planning consultant. And the plan really talks about four big things. It's conserving the land and protecting the land, connecting with a much larger, more diverse public. Uh, making sure that it's, we have good governance for the long term. So, you know, the things that were going wrong with the forest preserves in the last 30 years before us, that that wouldn't repeat itself. And then showing the economic value of the forest preserves and why it's important for a thriving, healthy region to have, you know, these forest preserve lands. And so there's a lot of detail laid out there. It's a very ambitious plan. Um, it's the Burnham plan of the forest preserves, if you will. And so we, you know, we, but we've been, we've been uh, working towards accomplishing those goals. We measure them. We have, we have metrics that we look at regularly to make sure that we're on, we're on point. So <clears throat> give us the four points again for the next century plan. The land, manage the land, protect the land, buy more land uh, for, for the long term. Uh, connecting with a more diverse and larger audience to make sure that they know the forest preserves are available and that they connect with them. And, and why was that a challenge? There's a couple reasons for that, at least a couple. Uh, I think one is people just don't have the knowledge that the forest preserves exist to, on the scale that they do. They either interact with them in a very specific way, like picnics or coming out to family events, which is awesome, is a big part of what we do but not recognizing the full breadth of all the things that exist. And then there's this, uh, this, this sense of nature's not for me for a lot of urban residents. And, and sometimes that means African-American or Latino residents that they don't connect with nature because it's for somebody else, that sort of way of thinking. And we're here to dispel all of that. Nature's for anybody. If you're a human being, it's for you. 
and we want to get through what's holding you back from coming out and experiencing nature. And so we're doing that through programs, we're doing that through camping, we're just sort of connecting with people where they are and recognizing that some people have had bad experiences or their family history there were bad experiences about nature and so how do you sort of break through that? Uh, I tell people my story is my dad is from Georgia and he fished, rode horses, all the country guy stuff and I knew a lot of guys like him growing up but not everybody had that experience and they didn't pass it on to their kids and so a few generations in the city can, you can lose your connection to nature and our job is to get you reconnected. I think we train people to be leaders of groups to come in to the preserves, right? Yes. I mean, so we do that in a few different ways. We, we, uh, we have a, it's called CLIC, it's Camping Leader Leadership Immersion Course, where we train group leaders of their groups. It could be a church group, it could be some uh, social service agency, a school. We train those group leaders and we do overnights with them and then we lend them gear, camping gear, because if you never camp before, you probably don't own your camping it, yeah. gear, right? And they bring their group out and they spend the night in our forest preserves and you know, we lend them the gear and it's, it's all part of a program to really build more leaders to do that kind of stuff. We look for, we partner with all sorts of community groups in and around the city, you know, the groups that have connections in the city and get them out to special events. So during a regular year, we're doing a lot of special events and we bring groups out and we, you know, we'll pay for the buses if they commit to coming back another time. So we want to have some, have them have some skin in the game too. So we're just trying to connect with people in different ways. Okay, so there's conserve, conserving the land, broadening the audience. What are the last two again? Uh, good governance. Uh -huh. So, uh, you know, we don't want to work on this and then have it fall apart when we're not here, right? You want it to continue beyond our time here. And so there's been a lot of work uh, from having an employment plan, you know, a Shackman mandated employment plan. When we got here, we were under the, the auspices of a Shackman monitor because historic hiring was bad and a lot of bad things were going on. And we, after a year and a half, we were able to get that straightened out in the courts, and now we have a hiring plan that makes us, forces us to hire qualified people, not just, you know, you know somebody kind of thing. Um, everything from that to having the, the Next Century Conservation Plan in, in, had us create a Conservation Leadership Council. And so these are appointed people, Conservation and Policy Council. These are appointed people. Uh, who have three-year terms and, and they overlap and they really are there because they care about the forest preserve, they, they are educators, they're people from healthcare, there's law professors, people from diverse backgrounds, people care about accessibility issues, and they advise us. They advise us on our budget, they advise us on uh, program issues, they put together four position papers uh, which have all been, have come to the board or are coming to the board. Um, to, to sort of say this is, your, this is what we think your guidance should be on issues of racial equity or uh, uh, recreation or you know, any number of things. And so I think they, they give us some support but also some guidance to make sure that we don't go off the rails in the future. Okay. All right, going forward, what do you hope to see in the preserves? Uh, I think uh, we've done a lot of good work but there's always more to do. You could work here for 50 years and there's always more to do so I approach it that way. I think we want to strengthen our house financially. I think you know we've worked with the resources that we've had and I think we've tried to show that we're not only good stewards of the land but good stewards of the public resource. We take that very seriously. We know if people feel like their resources are being squandered then they won't want to support us in the future and we know that's important. So I think you know identifying additional long-term resources to do even more of what we're doing. There's a whole lot that we could do if we had more resources. We operate on 1% of the property tax bill, so that's not enough. From my perspective, we could do a lot more if we had 2% or 3%. Um, and we would do awesome things. And we have a plan to show what we would do with that. It would help us show up our financial house with respect to pensions and, and natural growth of costs of things to do. So I think that's... Acquisitions. Acquisitions, absolutely. Land acquisition is a huge issue. You know, we want to continue to do that and grow. As the population grows, it's more important to have more land. Uh, and we're doing that actively out in the south suburbs, for example, right now. So. Uh, all those are things that are really important to us right now moving forward and um, I'd say I have a team of people who are really passionate about that mission and, and I am as well. Okay, we've, we've talked a lot about the preserves in a, in a sort of uh, timeless way, but clearly this is winter. Okay? Yes. All right, so what can people do in the preserves in the winter? So we are experiencing old time Chicago winter right now and there's a lot of snow and so we're right, at, we're right now we're at Dan Ryan Woods and it's one of uh, six places where you can go sledding and uh, it's very popular right now, a lot of that activity. Snowshoeing is very popular. People are still on the trails and so we encourage you to get out on the trails but just be safe and make sure you're, you're hydrated and dressed appropriately. 
um, but there's a lot of opportunity to cross country ski and just be outdoors. And so we encourage people to do that. You can visit us at our nature center. So there's six nature centers. You can come and we're doing programming there. We're, uh, the, the buildings are open for people to use the restrooms and things like that, but we're really encouraging you to get out and use the, the, the trails and programming out at the nature centers too. And uh, we've seen the numbers are higher than an average year right now. People are out, so it's exciting. If you want to know more information about it, you can go to the Forest Preserve website, which is fpdcc.com, or just Google Forest Preserves of Cook County. Uh, I know, you know there's a whole listing of programs and maps and everything you need to know uh, to experience the Forest Preserves. Well, I want to thank you for joining us. Thank you. And thank you for your good work, and please give my thanks to all your team. I will. Thank you.